Welcome to the Freedom From Religion Foundation's Ask an Atheist on Facebook Live. I'm Dan Barker. And I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I would do better if the teleprompter moved. There we go. I know who we are, but I uh, have an introduction. We're co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces this live show every Wednesday at noon central. And you can catch it also on YouTube afterward. And today we're going to talk about two issues. We're going to celebrate Women's Equality Day. Today is the centennial of the adoption of the 19th Amendment when women, U.S. women, finally won the right to vote. And after that, we're going to talk about free thought, humanist activism in Puerto Rico. We'll be joined in a few minutes remotely by two free thought activists in Puerto Rico that the Freedom From Religious Foundation have been working with. Their names are Gerardo Rivera and Eva Quiñones. They are with the group Humanistas Seculares de Puerto Rico, which is the secular humanists of Puerto Rico. We have breaking news today with the public announcement that the lawsuit that FFRF took with the secular humanists of Puerto Rico to stop unlawful school prayer has been successful. I'm going to clap. So we'll talk about that with, uh, with Gerardo and Eva. Then we'll also talk about the premier essay competition for secular high school students in Puerto Rico, which is also a joint project of FFRF and Secular Humanists of Puerto Rico, with more than $16,000 in prize money being awarded. 16000 I think, make it clear. What did I say? Sounded like it could be either sixty or 16000 16, okay. We wish it could be 60000 Maybe next time it could be <laughs> sixty or maybe six. So uh, Gerardo and Eva are going to tell us about the winners uh, who wrote on the topic, The Importance of State Church Separation in Puerto Rico. So there is a lot to talk about today and if you have a question during the show or a comment on these topics you can enter it into our Facebook comments or you can send an email to ask an atheist all one word ask an atheist at fffrf.org and we'll try to get to it by the end of the program. So first today is a very historic day Dan it's not only Women's Equality Day it is actually the centennial the hundredth anniversary of the adoption of women's rights. And I want to talk about the free thought component in this. We would not have voting rights for women. We would not be celebrating the centennial of Women's Equality Day were it not for free thinkers. I think it's terribly important that um, we acknowledge the role of the early free thinkers, the unorthodox, the um, heretics who are willing to challenge the biblical edict that women have to keep in silence. Um, and subjection and in servitude and the premier person, the first person to actually call for women's right to vote in the United States was? Elizabeth Cady Stanton, yes. who was a free thinker. She was a free thinker, she was an agnostic and she became increasingly critical of religion. She um, ended up being the editor of the Woman's Bible, which in the 1890s was repudiated by the very a feminist movement that she basically had fomented. The Women's Bible was critical of the Bible. The Women's Bible was very critical of the Bible. She was the editor. She did a lot of the writing and there were also many other contributors. And uh, in the book that I edited, Women Without Superstition, uh, which is an anthology of women freethinkers that's available from FFRF.org shop, it's, it's very complete about the early, early women freethinkers. There's a whole 75-page section, a reader, on Elizabeth Cady Stanton's views on religion because she wrote so much, so constantly, against religion, analyzing the Bible, not just the book, the Woman's Bible, but in speeches, um, newspaper articles, op-eds. Also, very much an ardent supporter of separation of church and state. So, Elizabeth Cady Stanton was very much feted in her day by the Free Thought Movement. And just briefly, um, in August of 1848, um, together with a few Quaker friends, they decided to hold the first women's rights convention about women's grievances, about our lack of rights. And it was Katie Stanton who was the one who insisted on the right to vote, shocking her colleagues, but she persisted. That was too radical. It was very thing. controversial, but then they held this two-day meeting. I won't go into all the details, but uh, Frederick Douglass, the, the great orator, abolitionist, uh, uh, editor of the North Star, was a great celebrity as a former slave, came to the meeting. He was the women's champion. 
And uh, by the end of the meeting, uh, the men and women there present adopted the voting plank. And then it was 72 years of struggle. And of course, Stanton was later joined by Susan B. Anthony, uh, women like Sojourner Truth. And I think we've got a picture of a statue of them that should, we should be able to show. This is um, put up this morning in Central Park. And I, I wasn't able to watch it. But this is the statue of uh, Anthony's on the left, uh, Sojourner's on the left, Sojourner Truth. Anthony is standing, and, and Katie Stanton is seated on the right. And um, this is to celebrate um, the suffrage movement and, and women's equality in Central Park. It was dedicated today, this morning. And it was the brainchild of Colleen Jenkins, who is the great, great, great granddaughter of Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Great, great, two greats. Great, great granddaughter. And of course, Sojourner Truth was one, um, came on the suffrage scene even before Anthony. And her famous anti-woman speech, of course, has been much celebrated. So um, we weren't able to get Colleen Jenkins on this program today because she's very busy with the dedication in New York City. But she is joining uh, us on Free Thought Radio and our podcast tomorrow that will be going up tomorrow to talk about monumental women, talk about the whole suffrage um, uh, movement, her ancestor, and about the dedication today. So uh, we do want to celebrate uh, Women's Equality Day, but with always the caveat that, of course, when it was passed in 1920, um, white women were allowed to vote, and many, many black women in the North, but if you were in a state with a southern state or one that had Jim Crow laws and you were black, or even if you were a Native American, which you have Native American ancestry, or if you were Asian American, it took decades, almost 65 years, uh, for the Civil Rights Act to pass, uh, the Voting Rights Act to pass in 1965. So um, these rights have been hard won and many people were left out. But what we really need to do, we women and progressives and free thinkers, is flex our secular muscle this year and vote. Can you see this little uh, paperweight? Votes for women? I and gave this to Annie Laurie as a reward for writing her book, uh, which is pretty much um, the symbol that they used way back then, wasn't it? Votes for women. And then we have, I think, a picture of Time Magazine which is 100 Women of the Year, and they went through all the women of, of, that they'd ever put on the cover and came up with this, this list. So this is out just this week. So we do want to celebrate feminism, and we do want to keep fighting for our rights because they are truly jeopardized. So speaking of American citizens who still don't have the right to vote, we're going to move to the territory of Puerto Rico. The right to vote in federal elections. In federal elections. Well, they don't have any representation in Congress either, right. so they, they're not voting for any of that. And we have on the phone with us today, on, not on the phone, on Skype with us today, Gerardo Rivera, who is up there on the right, and Eva Quinones. They are both involved in the humanist group in Puerto Rico called Humanistas Seculares de Puerto Rico, which is Secular Humans of Puerto Rico. So thanks for joining us today, Gerardo and Eva. Thank you. Hello, nice to Annie Laurie. Hello, Dan. So, you, so, so happy to be here. You Thank two are, you so much. You're on opposite sides of the island right now, right? You're, Gerardo, you're way over on the west, and Eva, you're way over on the east. So, um, Yes. You've got the yes. whole thing covered. Covered completely. Yeah, <laughs> we have members throughout the island. Wow. Yes. And so, I was down there last September and I got to meet, um, do we have pictures of that? Um, Bruce, got to meet some of the secular humanists that are down there, including, uh, it was at a college, wasn't it? A, a lawyer college, right? Yes. No, no, yeah. that was the Bar Association headquarters in San Juan. Oh, in San Juan, okay. Well, there's some of us right there in that, in that building, uh, promoting separation of church and state and free thought. So you were going to say something? Well, I was going to say before we talk about, we're very excited about our um, a partnership with the humanists in Puerto Rico to debut the first free thought contest for students. And you have a lot of news to announce on that, but this is happening to be the day that we are breaking the news about the successful settlement of FFRS first lawsuit in Puerto Rico, which only happened because of you two and others, the plaintiff. And I wondered, Eva, if you wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what was going on um, and what we stopped. 
Oh, definitely. So the mother of these two girls in a public school in Puerto Rico um, recorded the uh, some religious uh, ceremonies at the school. And uh, when she asked her daughters what was going on, turns out that the girls were being harassed because they didn't want to participate. And uh, they told a uh, social worker in the school that they really didn't believe in that. And they didn't think they could be made to show up or that the activities themselves should happen. And uh, they told the mother and when the mother complained, the school actually like shut down on them, shut down on the mother and the girls and uh, started moving them around from one class to the other. And they started to tell other parents in the school that these are the Satanists, these are the atheist girls and the mother. And uh, some of the grades were affected because of this. And uh, the mother complained in the school and she was basically shut down too. And uh, so she came to us and uh, a, we had talked to Dan at some point about maybe you guys at Freedom From Religion Foundation to help us in one of these lawsuits. And uh, Dan said yes. And uh, we sued the Department of Education with that. And that has been a dream of mine ever since I've been aware of what an atheist means and the constitution and separation of church and state. So dream come true for, for many people here and especially for me. Uh, we sued the Department of Education, and uh, the, we asked for a, we made a petition to have the girls' names and the mother's name be anonymous, like a Jane Doe lawsuit, and the court refused, but went ahead and ordered a mediation. This is federal court for the District of Puerto Rico. And uh, the day of the mediation, we all show up, and the secretary is not there, and he doesn't send anybody to represent them. So the mediator contacted the judge and the judge ordered the secretary of education to show up in two hours or he would be held in contempt of the law and he would be handcuffed and brought over to the mediation. And uh, he finally showed up and uh, we, we, the mother spoke about the harassment to the girls and the harassment herself she had received. Um, we had the chance to speak to the school principal there which is the one basically coordinating most of these religious activities. We established how many had happened, the harassment, and uh, that it was an overtly Christian evangelical kind of meeting in the school grounds during school hours. And uh, Sam, your awesome lawyer there, staff lawyer, Sam Brower. Sam. He, yeah, yeah wonderful. He, he's always been like, very, very massively good at telling us what to say, what to do, and, and like polishing our, our documents so we could be more effective. And uh, fortunately for the mediation agreement, everything that Sam and Freedom From Religion Foundation told us to, to say in the mediation, it was all accepted verbatim, like as if, he wrote it and sent it to himself, uh, which is massive. So the that's uh, that was Sam Grover, who is our attorney. But we're also working with your attorney, Carlos. What's his last name? We have a Carlos picture, don't we, Bruce? Carlos Cintron. Carlos Cintron. Carlos Cintron, who um, there he is there, yeah. uh, who was our local counsel right there in in Puerto Rico. But everything's done in English in the courts, isn't it? Yeah, um, you have the document, you can share them because this is federal court, so this is in English. And uh, fortunately for us, uh, the counsel for the Secretary of Education was late in submitting his changes, his proposed changes to the mediation. And the mediator wouldn't have any of that and basically said, you were too late, we're going to accept the Humanistas document verbatim as written and uh, they were objecting seriously to one little detail. They didn't want to admit any wrongdoing. Um, what they wanted to admit only was that they would not do the religious activities again in that school only. Not that they had done them and they had to discontinue because that's an admission of wrongdoing. 
uh, among the other agreements is that within two weeks of the start of the school um, semester, which happened about a week ago, they would have uh, a training for the teachers and principals and all the staff in that school about what not to do. And uh, the training has to include everything in the mediation. And uh, as we know, and as I said, the mediation includes everything that Sam told us that based on all the jurisprudence, basically, what can and cannot be done in regards to preaching and religion in public schools in the federal system, which includes Puerto Rico for this, specifically for, for public schools. Also, it has to be said that Puerto Rico, the, the separation clause says that um, there shall be complete separation between church and state. It's in our constitution. And uh, it also says in the Bill of Rights, when it talks about public education in Puerto Rico, that it has to be non-sectarian specifically. So um, this preaching in schools, which happens in a significant amount of them, is strictly prohibited by the Bill of Rights, not only uh, of, of, the gov of, of the citizen for Puerto Rico, but also for all the public school students. And so. uh, they're just ignoring this. And we had a brave mother that suffered yes. harassment <laughs> from the school. The school had to admit to the harassment. It's part of the mediation. They have to train teachers. They have to also send a letter to all the public schools in Puerto Rico, reminding them that they cannot preach and uh, promote creationism, or they cannot allow teachers and, uh, and other staff to preach to the students. So this settlement, this mediation settlement, admits that the school violated the kids' rights by preaching to them, but also indicates that all the schools are going to receive this letter telling them they cannot preach or promote religion, not even outside of uh, of the classroom, in, in the hallways, in no place in the school. So this is like a massive whammy. And uh, we're thinking that we may have problems if the administration changes with the elections, that they may decide to ignore um, this mediation agreement. They may consider it non-binding for some reason. So we're ready to keep fighting this, but as, as, as we see it right now, we can stop preaching to students in public schools within five years. That's great. And that uh, uh, we have a way to uh, for the parents to be anonymous because we have standing to represent them. So I can take all the hits they want. And the parents can be pretty much anonymous because we have a direct hotline to the Secretary of Education right now and his legal department to deal with these cases. And that has been the problem because we have parents every year telling us, please help me, please help me. They're preaching to my kids. And we say, okay, let's do this. Oh, but I don't, I don't want them to know who I am. I don't want to affect my kids. So it's a real thing. It's a real thing. And, and this mother suffered the harassment that really happens when, the, when you don't do this anonymously. And now we have a mechanism to do this. Well, that is, is so wonderful. And we, we want to congratulate everybody and we also want to thank our members who make possible the litigation um, so that we can afford to take lawsuits like this. And I just want to reiterate that this involved uh, uh, every other week they would take the kids on a Monday, I believe, and pray at them for 50 minutes in the courtyard. 50, right? Five zero. Five zero, almost an hour. And uh, this mother was told that if she took her children out of the class for the prayer, that uh, they would get a tardy mark and that that would affect their grade point average. Mm -hmm. And also they were outed. So it was really an extreme injustice and we're just delighted to be working with you uh, and the uh, uh, Secular Humanist of Puerto Rico. And, and we also have another very cool campaign going. So, um, so you can't vote for president, but you can vote for the winners of the historic territory-wide essay contest for free-thinking students, which is what you did. The first one in the state. So, Gerardo, though, you were, were pretty involved in all of this and announcing it. Um, Bruce, do we have the flyer? That there it is. You see that? There's a competition of essays for students in high school. 
And uh, so, uh, Gerardo, tell us, tell us kind of about this whole thing and what was the topic? Oh, he's mute. I can't oh, are you me. mute? We can't yes. hear you. Now you can hear me. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, sorry for that. Yeah, for starters, like, we want to always give thanks to FFRF for their, all the wonderful work uh, they do. It, wasn't, it wouldn't have been possible for us to do this. Um, so, yes, our competition that was uh, directed towards students in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, so high school students. And that would include students that had just graduated and planned to go to uh, university or any other uh, a study institution that they favored. Um, the, they would have to write an essay, send it to us. That topic would be the importance of separation of church and state in Puerto Rico. And practically, we gave them open reign so they could write whatever convincing arguments they could in pro of the church separation. We received uh, not only uh, essays from secular students, we just we received from religious students, from atheists, any any person who was pro-separation uh, submitted. We ended up receiving 150 <laughs> sub students, wow. and it was massive. For us, it was massive. Oh, yeah. Initially, yes, initially our competition uh, was directed only towards 10th and 11th graders, but then we decided to uh, open it up to all high school, and that's when we got like a huge influx of participation. And I remember at some point, uh, the board here of Humanism Puerto Rico, we were discussing uh, the huge influx of uh, essays. And we we were, we were were very scared for a second, thinking how we were going to uh, grade all and evaluate all these essays. But we managed. We managed. Uh, so we had our excellent board members. They all became judges for a few weeks and started reading masses of essays. And we were so happy to see all the talent of students just poured, poured their souls practically, their non-existent souls practically into the essays. And the talent here is just massive. Um, hopefully we will be able to show, uh, if we can maybe show their faces, we, we have a picture of the first 10 prize winners. And wow. hopefully we'll be able to talk to at least one or two of them if we're lucky, but at least we'll surely talk to one. And so, yeah, um, the first essay written by F. Fatima Rosal uh, is very related to this uh, lawsuit that we uh, that we were just discussing because Fatima, which she will be discussing soon, uh, faced uh, a similar uh, situation in her school, and so she'll be explaining that. I also want to emphasize how massive the amount of uh, church state violations are in Puerto Rico in schools. People are deeply, deeply uneducated about separation in public schools. It, myself, when I was in high school, I was a victim of this. Um, I remember being in high school and the teachers and the staff there were organized religious service uh, during break. And all students were practically uh, non-obligated to assist, but you, we all know what that means, um, peer pressure to go. And they practically said, if you don't like it, you don't have to go, but you don't have practically any option of anywhere to go if you don't want to. So I ended up writing a letter and we ended up shutting that down. So I just want people to understand that just because you're not hearing about this doesn't mean it's not happening. This happens to thousands of students around the U.S. and in Puerto Rico and other places around the world. And it's it's an injustice that should be corrected. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions about the essay contest. Well, I was going to first say that that we were so pleased that you did this. FFRF was able to pay for the prizes, but you did all the work and made it happen. And we have um, five other essay competitions that we judge. And Dan and I were just spending the weekend looking at a lot of them. So we know how much work it is, especially remotely. Yeah, but we in the whole country, high school, we got 500. Yeah, we got 500. So the fact that you got 150, 150 is much more than I thought would happen. And I think it was a lot more than you did. And you were really troopers uh, to make that work. And now we know the excitement there is and the interest. Um, I guess maybe we can be better prepared for it. 
But yeah. thank you so much for administering that. And, um, and is there anything else you wanted to add about that before we bring on one of the students or try to? I just wanted to uh, thank you specifically, Annie, because I remember that you were the one who brought the idea to us. And if it, was, if it weren't for you, we, this, none of this would have been possible. So I just want to thank uh, you, Dan, and all FFRF supporters, because if it weren't for your supporters and ours, none of this or none of the work that we do to help church, uh, protect church-state separation would be possible. Well, I'm just thrilled with our collaboration. Thank you for making it possible. So um, are we going to say goodbye to one of you and then bring on a student? Is that, is yes, that what? I'll try to disconnect now so hopefully we can get Fatima or some other student to talk a bit about their essays okay. and their experience. So thank we can, you. Um, well, thank bye you, bye. head out of the way. Hope to see you again. Thanks for all your hard work. So we can chat with Eva just for a second here before uh, we dial up um, um, one of the yes. students. So Eva, I, were you one of the judges? I, of course, I was one of the judges. I had to judge uh, a big proportion of them. And we had we did like a two round thing. We did like a first round where everybody kind of got rid of the ones that we didn't think were, were top essays. And then I evaluated um, all the top nominations. So I had to deal with about 25 plus the other group, about 50 essays in total which is fine, this is my job, this is what I do, I was so thrilled. And uh, I really hope we can do this again uh, next year. Oh yes. Because, because we're shocked and this is good. And even religious students were saying things that are separation, are what we mean when we talk about separation. And uh, not, uh, no Christian or religious students won eventually the first two prizes, but I think one or two sneaked in at some point I want to say that uh, that Fatima's essay, the one that won, is really particularly good because she has a great flow. She writes wonderfully. And uh, you're going to see that, please. Uh, I think, if we, if, yeah, I think we have her with us. Oh, Welcome. there she and, is. And uh, here we have Fatima. And the important thing about Fatima's situation is that this essay exemplifies what we're talking about in in schools in Puerto Rico, and she has a horror story to tell. She mm -hmm. wrote it brilliantly, and uh, please have her explain what went on and, and her reaction but, to it. But first, Eva. Hello, Fatima. Hello, yes, Fatima. Sorry. Yes. But first, both of you, you should explain that these essays were in Spanish, right? This, these yeah. essays were in Spanish. Yeah. However, maybe we can talk Fatima into translating her essay yeah. to English. Her English is very good, huh. and uh, maybe maybe you can feature it in your, okay. in yes. your page and, and share it because it's a horror story. Huh. She writes elegantly and beautifully, and uh, let's talk her into it, huh? So tell us what happened, Fatima. Felicitaciones. Hola, gracias. Um, so I hope you can guys hear me. I don't know, yeah. like the neighbor decided to make noise anyway. So basically my essay is about a situation that happened to me in 11th grade. Um, my school decided to take us on a field trip and they didn't really tell us where to, was like where we were going. And um, when we arrived to the place, we just found out that it was in a church. And they, um, I remember they told us, the teachers, some teachers told us that it was mandatory our presence in this like Field trip, so we got inside um, the church, kind of freaked out because it was a church and we're public like public school students, which was really really weird. So we got inside the church and the people helping with the whole um, kind of lecture thing um, told us that we couldn't get up and we couldn't use our phones, <laughs> and all of a sudden um, the lecture was about. Um, being a, um, saying, like doing like a, I don't know, like acto, like a abs, abs, abstinence? Abstinence. Yeah. Pact. yeah, abstinence pact with God, but it was not really mandatory. It was not um, really, if you didn't want to do it, you shouldn't do it. But, it, you know, it was uh, like a hundreds of students and you actually felt pressured to do it. 
And then they start talking about abortion, how it was a sin, how it's illegal in Puerto Rico, abortion is legal. And the toys, they started t- t- telling us that it was actually illegal, it was a sin, and we shouldn't do it. And then um, they gave us like um, abstinence certification um, papers because we made a pact with God for staying absent uh-huh. in our lives. And then when it all ended, they gave us like fetuses like doll wow. fetuses <laughs> it was horrible wow. um they stopped like they told the teachers that it was only a field trip they didn't really tell the teachers that it was um that type of lecture or activity um they only knew that it was mandatory and they should make all students go um so we went so we went so when it ended we kind of went to the teachers and they were like why would you took us to a church and they were like we didn't really know huh. so yeah and then some of the students took it to social media some of the students could like took pictures and videos and then after that they were kind of harassed so you were like for me i was really stuck in talking or not talking because um a lot of um family members work at the same school i went so i didn't really want to um kind of involve them in the situation. Um, and the students that actually talked about it kind of were harassed around the school and around social media and by other peers in school. It was really, really hard for us and a really, really um, uncomfortable situation for all of us. So Fatima, um, uh, what, what year are you in school? I'm a freshman in college. You're a freshman in college. college. You just started Mexico. college. So, yes. And are, are you in person there in Puerto Rico, or are you remote? We're remote. Um, all my classes are online. Well, we are so glad that you entered the competition, and we will definitely plan to translate it, or have you translate it, or Dan translate it, so that we can reprint it in our newspaper Free Thought Today and share it with our 32,000 members across North America. And, um, you know, it's a... it's thrilling to have you win this. And it was a $3,500 cash scholarship, I should say. And we, uh, and, and Secular Humanist of Puerto Rico gave out $16,500 in scholarships to 10 winning students and then several students who got $200 honorable mentions. So, thank you so much. Thank you. And, and, for, and one last question. How did you hear about it? Um, a family member tagged me on the Humanistas Facebook page. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not do it and talk about this situation? It was actually the first time I wrote about it or talked about it because I didn't really need it to do, to talk about it because, you know, my friends went through it. My parents went through it with me, so I didn't have a lot of people talk about it. So um, when I got the promo, I decided to, why not? Let's just try it. So I want to ask something. Um... What percentage of students in Puerto Rico do you think are really devoutly religious, or how many of them are skeptical or free-thinking like you among your friends? I can, well, that's a really hard question. I would like to say like a 40% are really religious, and the other 60% is, um, hmm. are really, really open-minded with it. Um, hmm. We are really, I, most of the persons I have talked to about the, the um, situation have been really, really open with me and have really shared the same emotions as me with the whole situation. Wow. So, yeah. Well, that's more than I would have estimated. So that's that yeah. shows that something is happening in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for entering the con- contest and joining us today. And I don't know if we still have Eva on or uh, Gerardo. Eva's here, I yeah. I am here, yes. So, I, I want to say that her numbers seem to me that for, for uh, kids of a certain age, they they seem legit. The 60-40 thing is probably right, including the non, not the atheists or humanists themselves, but the nuns, definitely. And uh, the thing is that kids don't want to be involved with the excesses of evangelical Christianism in Puerto Rico. They are pro um equality pro, pro inclusion they are not against lgbt rights etc so in that sense that 
the excesses of religion are driving kids away, and we promote that wholeheartedly. So we have another student who has won a, an essay competition, has won the essay competition. Rebecca, is it? Oh, no, Roberto? No, Roberto. Roberto. Roberto, <laughs> hello. There you are. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. It's a pleasure to be here. Nice to meet you. What city are you in? I'm in the East Coast in Umagal. Umagal, way over there, huh? Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. You got second place, is that right? Yes. Wow. Yes. So Thank you. Th tell us about your essay. Well, um, thanks for asking. So my essay had a different approach, which was that oftentimes we say, well, there's a fundamentalist sector, but we never call them out because, um, well, I don't know, maybe on the East Coast we have different percentages because Fatima said, 40% um, devout religious people, but uh, in my school at least it was like a 90% and the other 10% I would say that it was afraid or something or but you know the numbers are staggering. So my approach was to call them out and to say you know what it's the Christianism the ones who are trying to you know create this web of, of, of um, this thing, they want to break the state and church separation. And so I just said it. I said it, you know, it's Christianism and we need to fight because that that um, separation is the one that ensures that all humans are able to express themselves freely. And that is something that is not happening in my school or in my friend's school. And it's something that I believe that these organizations are the ones that are doing the hard work. And I deeply congratulate them for having the initiatives um, to go to court and defend the people who are um, defendless because there's not that many people defending them. Because, like I said, there is a huge majority of Christians here. And, and I'll be fine. If, only Christians who are trying to go to church and do their thing and that's it but no they want to spread their message illegally you know and that is where it becomes a problem I mean we're not against Christians not at all but they're doing it illegally especially in schools and so I think that it's very important to create essays like the ones I did and the ones that the ones that all of the consistent created but not only that, we have to go out there and make our voices heard and understood that this has to stop. You're going on to college, Roberto? I'm a freshman in college. You are a freshman. Wow, congratulations. And so in which, Thank you. which school are you at now? Um, well, right now I'm in the UPR in Macau, um, but I studied uh, my high school years in La Florencia Garcia. In Las Piedras. Wow. So, Roberto, could you give us an example of what you personally encountered that's so troubling in the schools? Yes, yes. So, um, for example, uh, if somebody if somebody was uh, was having a, a bad time, you know, like a disease or something like that, we would uh, do circles of prayer and we would pray on and on. And, uh, and then um, whenever we, we would be uh, in classroom and they would simply uh, um, play Christian music and they would just um, ask to, hey, pray for, pray for that, uh, pray for, for your friend to yeah. get a job. Those little things that were, you know, that I mean, people would think that it's not a big deal, but there's a lot of people that don't believe in what you believe, and you're trying to choke your religion down their throat, especially at school, which is supposed to be a place to get educated. educated. Yeah. Yes. Not brainwashed. We're, we're having a little bit of IT trouble here. 
But uh, Roberto, um, we're thrilled that you entered the competition and won second place, which was a $3,000 prize. And we hope that Roberto um, and Fatima will continue their secular activism on campus uh, remotely for now. And I have to say that we are loving having the students on and we will continue to have winning students. We have our, oh, Fatima's here. Eva. Eva's still here. So I want to say that we'll be having other students join us uh, from our other competitions as well. So Eva, any last remarks? Well, yes, uh, you, you can see that the work of promoting free thinking and humanism and non-belief in Puerto Rico has been working and uh, the numbers are showing it. And most most kids are very critical of, of religion, of the excesses of religion. And uh, we're fine with that because they are to blame for a lot of troubles. But I also want to emphasize that these kids, they, they will be forever tied to separation of church and state. They have the right ideas. They're not making it up. They, they have the constitution, they have jurisprudence, they have resources like Freedom From Religion Foundation to inform them of, of how to go on about being a secularist and a humanist and thinker in Puerto Rico. And uh, we're also, I also have to say, I, today is the, uh, the 68th anniversary of the foundation of Humanist International it helps us also very much. And uh, then there is very, very familiar with the work they do today is their 68th anniversary too. Uh. And uh, I, I just want to go again and, and thank everybody. We have to thank specifically Sam that was always so meticulous in, in his help to us. We wanted to do something that was watertight and I think uh, we managed to do it even though the other parts lawyer was negligent. But the judge couldn't have it. He accepted everything. And uh, we're on our way to secularizing the public schools in Puerto Rico. So um, I want to say something, I have Eva. To, uh -huh. the, yeah. You have some power now. The next time you make a complaint about a violation in the schools or, in, or anywhere else in Puerto Rico, uh, you now have legal precedent. They now know that you mean business. They now know that you could go to court, that you could challenge this. So this gives you a really strong, if I can borrow a word, a strong Trump card to use. Huh? And, and I'm working with FFRF, we hope, as backup whenever you need it. The thing is that this is actually the precedent we wanted, that we've been dreaming of for so many years. Now we have access to the Department of Education and uh, I don't want to sound like a, like a Sunday school teacher, but we got to get them young. And uh, if the Constitution says it, let's do it that way. And uh, we 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 get our the doors shut in our face in so many other lawsuits. But this one, we, we had a, a victim that could prove what was happening to her and that that made the, the judge really pay attention to this because we're used to having our cases dismissed. And uh, it, it's just what it is, and we're ready to, ha to have this press and rub it in everybody's noses. Well, it was and, wonderful, uh, wonderful it, to it, it, win it, and wonderful to work with you and Secular Humanist of Puerto Rico. And thank you so much for you. joining us, Ava. And we already said goodbye to Gerardo, but now we have She some, can stay on for questions. You can stay on, yeah. We have some questions and we'll see. We do have a couple of questions from viewers of the show. If you want to stay on, Eva. Um, Absolutely. Oh, right now, there's just two. So Jess Cosbab is asking, have we ever taken a lawsuit in Puerto Rico before? Oh, well, ha the Freedom From Religion Foundation has not, but has Secular Humanists of Puerto Rico taken lawsuits? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, th uh, this person here in a town in the North Coast decided to involve uh, the mayor and the mayor's office and the whole municipality with uh, these activities that they would call 40 days of fasting and prayer. Oh, yeah. And uh, it, it, they spread like wildfire and many towns were doing them. So, so we requested information about funding for five of these municipalities. And uh, the five of the cases were decided differently. Uh, and one of the judges in, in, mysteriously 
told us in court, oh, this is a separation of church and state case. State courts cannot deal with this. Only the federal courts can deal with it. Huh. And we had to school the law, the judge on that. Huh. And uh, also the House of Representatives, through his president, decreed 40 days of fasting and prayer oh, in early 2013. And uh, we sued with the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union, which has helped us a lot throughout the years too. And I got dismissed uh, at like two days before the fasting, everybody was still fat. And uh, <laughs> it got dismissed because lack of standing, of course, standing is this, what we have to watch out uh, for the next um, decades if things are going like this. And yeah. uh, if we lose Judge Ruth Bader Ginsburg, we're going to have even more problems with the standing part of any lawsuit we do. And uh, it, it is what it is. We have to create more jurisprudence refining the standing position in, in in our suits, in our claims for for separation of church and state, and that uh, you have the right people to fine tune the standing part, and that uh, we have to emphasize that the law reviews, law books, law professors have to start developing cohesive, decent, non-exclusionary standing um, arguments, so we can keep prevailing. When judges really want to dismiss our cases up front, and this is the easy way out. So I, I'm, I'm asking you formally, and we're doing it here. And we have we had at least one student that's now part of our legal staff that that wrote about this in a legal review, uh, legal uh, magazine, and that uh, we have to emphasize the standing, standing, standing. Our yeah. loss to the House of Representatives was dismissed. In, in a bizarre way. How can you promote religion from the highest levels of government and have a judge saying that nah, nothing happened here? And yeah. one of our arguments was that they're turning us into second-class citizens. And uh, I have the president of the House of Representatives in video saying that you, if you don't have God in your heart, you're worthless. You're worth nothing. So no, we have another question. Let's we see. have one more question here. Um, but first, I have a question for you, Eva, and I think I asked you this last September. If Puerto Rico is not a state, how can you have the separation of church and state? Ah, good question. <laughs> so uh, here, it no, you, it's to, a joke. <laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke. Oh, uh, because you, I can explain it. <laughs> because you do have a state, a state court there, don't you? You want to say something briefly about that? No, uh, we, we, we are like a colony. But uh, Congress made a law to authorize us to redact a constitution that needed to have all the, the characteristics of a state constitution. So this is just like a regular constitution like any other state. And as church and state separation is mentioned specifically, there shall be complete separation between church and state. And that was mysteriously included there by the evangelical that we're still second class to Catholics that we're majority. So right one, now, I think we're about 50-50. One last question here before we go. From Megan Baranek, if I'm saying that right, Bar Baranek. She's asking, where can we read the winning essays of the Puerto Rican essay contest? The winning essays will be published in our webpage, humanistaspr.org. We don't have them uploaded yet. They are all in Spanish. We can upload um, the first 10. We could technically upload them all. But humanistaspr.org. And uh, Gerardo is going to be taking care of that. We're also going to be sharing well, uh, all the links on our Twitter. Hum at humanistaspr. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. Humanistas de Puerto Rico is our fan page. And... Uh, we, we've had a lot of problems in the past few years because of Hurricane Maria, because earthquakes, because of COVID, because of drought, because of corruption. We picked our governor last year, and uh, we have a governor 
and it, it's a political mess down here. But but there's still humanism. There is still separation. People still think about it, and that uh, we have to focus our efforts on really creating free thinkers, creating humanists. And like, Eva, I wanted to say that one yeah. of the reasons that I contacted, um, I, I think I contacted Gerardo um, from Secular Humanists of Puerto Rico to help endow this essay competition was after reading that 130 public schools in Puerto Rico had closed after Hurricane Maria. And yeah. thinking what are, you know, I know some people are leaving the island, but what are children doing? What can we do to help public school students and in, of course, particular students who are have beliefs that are secular. So um, we really look forward to having this as an annual competition, if that is going to work out for the readers. It's a lot of work. So that we can continue to do something to help students in Puerto Rico. Well, thank you so much, Eva, for joining us today. And thank you, Gerardo, if you're still watching. I don't know if you're still on. And thank you, Fatima and Roberto, for joining us today from Puerto Rico. And uh, th thank you for watching. And we hope that if you're not a member of FFRF, you will join us today at FFRF.org. And tune in next week for Facebook Live, our Ask an Atheist, which is every Wednesday at noon central. And then you can catch it again on YouTube.